Welcome to class tonight. I do hope that you're all having a wonderful, wonderful night. Now we're going to be continuing our lessons about fractions by working on comparing and ordering fractions. You see that on the board in front of you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a new thing. I know I've taught this before in third grade and in other grades. So comparing and ordering fractions is, is one skill you've probably learned a lot of, or you've probably had a lot of practice on. But the issue is it's really, really important to know how to do this. This is incredibly important. So we're going to practice this once again. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, it would be helpful if you would and open your books to page 148. Once again, page 148. Now, we're going to start off this lesson, as I like to do on most lessons, with a very concrete way, meaning, with pictures, a very easy way to determine which fractions are bigger and which fractions are smaller. So what we're going to use, we're going to use these symbols that you are familiar with, greater than, less than, or equal to, and that's a horrible equal to, there we go. Greater than, less than, or equal to, we're going to use those signs today to work on this. So you have some fraction pies in front of you, and we're going to use these symbols to compare these fractions. So first of all, I have this fraction, let me erase this for now. My first fraction is going to be 1 fourth, because there's 1, 2, 3, 4 equal parts. Same thing here. There's 2 fourths here. So obviously, 1 fourth is going to be less than 2 fourths. 1 fourth less than 2 fourths. There's less shaded. Second one, I have 7. So I have 2 sevenths. And over here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And I have 4 sevenths. Well, obviously, 4 sevenths is larger. So you'd say 2 sevenths is less than 4 sevenths. Now that's pretty easy. Let's go to more, a little slightly more difficult. Right here, we have, two more, we, have, uh, we have two more sets. So my first fraction is going to be 3 eighths. And my second fraction is going to be three-fifths. So, let's look at these. So this only has that much shaded, whereas this has, wow, a lot shaded. So we would say three-eighths is less than three-fifths. Let's do one more. Right here I have, so it's going to be five-eighths. Five-eighths, and this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's going to be five sevenths. So I have five eighths and five sevenths. Well, you see, five sevenths is going to be bigger. There's more shaded with five sevenths. So we have five sevenths is bigger than or greater than five eighths, or you could say five eighths is less than five sevenths. So that's a very easy, very concrete way to look at this. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to be walking around. In fact, most people don't walk around with fraction pies in their pockets to try and figure out and use them to compare fractions. Or we could be dealing with fractions that there are no fraction pies for. So we need to know how to do this mathematically. We need to know how to do this in our heads. So I have one example here. Now this one, actually, you should be able to look at that example and probably figure that out. You should be able to look at that and probably figure out, oh, I mean, sorry. There we go. You should be able to look at that and solve this one very, very quickly. Five sevenths, well, duh, it's going to be bigger than three sevenths. Okay? So what we would say is five sevenths is greater than three sevenths. And that's my answer. It's as simple as that because five sevenths is going to be more than three sevenths. Now this one, uh-oh, they don't have common denominators and I don't have any fraction pies. So, hmm. What could I do? If you look in your book on page 149, you'll notice how they suggest you solve this. And there's actually two ways that you can solve this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little line down the middle because we're going to use these two different ways to solve this problem. So the very first way, and I think one of the easier ways, is simple. To find a common denominator, because you must have a common denominator to actually compare fractions. It's required. You can't just look at a fraction and see which one is bigger or smaller. You have to have common denominators. So one way to do that is very simple. 
multiply these two numbers together. 6 times 4. 6 times 4 is 24. So that's going to be my new common denominator. So it's going to look like this. 5, 6. Hmm. How, I need to get my top number. So what times 6 is going to equal? I actually set it up like this to help you out. So 5, 6 times what equals 24? Well, 6 times 4 is 24. I'm going to do the exact same number, because remember when we learned about equivalent fractions, we had to multiply by the exact same number. 5 times 4 is 20. Now with this one, 3 fourths. So 3 fourths times what equals 24? Well, 4 times 6 is 24. So multiply both sides by 6. 3 times 6 is 18. So I have my two fractions here. I have my first fraction and my second fraction. Well, let's see. 20 20 fourths or 18 20 fourths. Well, now I can compare them because they have a common denominator. And so obviously, I would rather have 20 20 fourths than 18 20 fourths. You could also solve this problem by using what we learned yesterday about the least common multiple. You can also use those skills. So it would look like this. You would find the least common multiple of 6 and 4. So 6 and 4. So the multiples of 6 are going to be 6, 12, 18. And I'll pause there. Multiples of 4 are going to be 4, 8, 12. Oh, look at that. I found my least common multiple, my LCM right there. And then you would simply use that as your common denominator. So it would look like this. I'm going to scroll down on purpose. So my 5, 6 is my original fraction. What would I multiply it by to get 12? Well, 6 times 2 equals 12. Whatever I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. 5 times 2 is 10. And I get 10 12. So I'm going to do the exact same thing 3 fourths. 4, how would I get to 12? Well, I'm going to multiply it by 3. Whatever I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. 3 times 3 is 9. And so on this side, I would have 9. And look at that. I once again find that 5 sixths 5 six is, is bigger than 9 twelfths. Now let me pause right here because this looks somewhat complicated. It is a little complicated. But the keys are, and I'll emphasize these key points, you have to have common denominators. You cannot compare fractions if you do not have common denominators. And there are two ways you can find them. You can either just multiply the two numbers together, or you can find the LCM. Those are the two ways you can get common denominators. Let's do one more. 6 eighths, 6 eighths, and 7 ninths. So I'm going to do this one, uh, so I'm gonna, I can do it two ways. I'm going to show you uh, how I'm going I'm to do the first way, and then I'll probably turn off the video and do the second way just to save some time today. So the first way is going to be you can multiply the two together. 8 times 9 is 72. So bam, I have my common denominator. So it's going to look like this. 6 eighths. How do I go from 8 to 72? Well, you're going to multiply by 9. 6 times 9 is 54. Same thing with 7 ninths. How do I go from 9 to 72? Well, you multiply by 8. 7 times 8 is going to be 56. And so I have my fractions there. 50 for 70 seconds, greater than, less than, or equal to 56, 70 seconds. Well, obviously, I would rather have 56, 70 seconds, so your answer is that right there. I'm going to turn off the video, and I'm going to do LCM, then we're going to talk about it very quickly. And poof, they have a lot more work. Now, I want to put something out here, ladies and gentlemen. I found, I worked on the LCM right there. But you'll see, I went out five places and didn't find an LCM. 
And so my rule of thumb, and I would encourage you to follow this as well, is if you go up five places, so I went eight times one, eight times two, eight times three, eight times four, eight times, eight times five. If you go up five places and you can't find an LCM, just multiply them together. It just makes your life a lot easier. If there's going to be an LCM, well, though there is, there's often LCMs in big in bigger numbers, but it's also just easier just to multiply them together and be done. So what I did here is then I just used 72 as my as my denominator and solved and got the exact same answer. So right there. So that is one way to do it, or so that's two ways to do, to solve those problems. Last thing, ladies and gentlemen. Well, last thing in this part. There's actually one more portion of this video. Mixed numbers. You're probably looking at that going, whoa, that looks a little scary. Well, it really isn't actually. With mixed numbers, it's pretty easy. Because if one mixed number is different from the other mixed number, for example, if you have three and one half compared to two and two thirds, well, that's pretty easy. The bigger whole number is gonna be bigger. But if they're the same, you actually have to do a little bit of work, but it's not too difficult. So right here I have 6 and 6, same whole number, so really I could just kind of not worry about them right now. If they're the same whole number, let's just not worry about them. Let's kind of pull them off to the side and leave them there. Let's focus on the fractions. Now 4 and 32. If I multiply those together, I'm going to get a really big number. It would be wisest to do the LCM method for this one. And really you should probably be looking at that number going, oh, I know the LCM. Because all I do is 32 times, 32 times 1 is, well, 32. 32 times 8 is 32. You should see that. So 4, sorry, 4 times 8 is 32. So that's going to be my LCM, my lowest common multiple, or least common multiple. Erase that on purpose. So then you're going to go 27, 30 seconds. That's my common denominator. So I don't need to change this one at all. Let's look at this one. 3 fourths. I'm going to get to 30 seconds, so let's see, 4 times 8 equals 32. So we're going to do the bottom and do the top. 24. And bam, I have it very easy. 27, 30 seconds is always going to be bigger than 24, 30 seconds. So you see mixed numbers, they look even scarier, but they're just as easy. Last thing, we can use this idea of comparing fractions to order fractions as well. I can use what I know to put these in order from biggest to small. So you say, wait a minute, first, there's three, there's two, and there's one. Obviously, this is going to be the smallest one. Well, remember, we cannot compare them because they are not, they do not have common denominators. So let's go ahead and find our common denominators very, very quickly. So to do this, I'm going to use my LCM method. So 8, 5, and 4. I need a common denominator for all of those. Now let's see. I'm going to start with 5. So we go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Uh, 4, I have um, 4, 8, 16, 20. Ooh, that looks promising. Oh, wait. That's not going to work, is it? Uh, how about 8? So we go 8... 16, 24, 32, and 40. So I know that 40 is a multiple of 5, and I know it's a multiple of 4. So let's go ahead and use 40, even though, so 5 times 80 is 40, 4 times 10 is 40. So I know 40 is going to be my lowest com or least common multiple. So let's use that to find simplest for, or to find the order of these fractions. Now I'm going to pause the video, do the work real quick to save you some time, and then talk about what I just did. All right, so you see at the bottom here, I, well, you see all the stuff that I just added. I found the equivalent form of 3 eighths, 2 fifths, and 1 fourth with my denominator of 40. So you see I put all these in the denominator of 40, and then multiplied and solved. So 3 eighths is going to equal 15 fortieths, 2 fifths is going to equal 16 fortieths, and 1 fourth is going to equal 10 fortieths. Well, now that they are in, now that they have common denominators or their equivalent fractions, it's very easy to order them. One fourth is going to be the smallest, because that's ten fortieths. The next one is going to be three eighths, because that's fifteen fortieths. And the last one's going to be uh, 
two fifths. And so that is my answer. One fourth, three eighths, and two fifths. And I did that and I could solve that because I put them in equivalent fractions. I made equivalent fractions. I found common denominators. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is the lesson. The keys tonight are going to be to find are going to be to find common denominators. You must do that. You can only order and compare using common denominators. Your homework tonight is going to be page 150, 8 through 22 even. Once again, page 850, sorry, page 150, 8 through 22 even. Have a great night. We'll see you all tomorrow.